Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. Please be seated or kneel. Let us pray. God, our comforter, like lost sheep we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts in Jesus' name the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all we do, Empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Numbers. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servants so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a suckling child? 
to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give to all this people? For they come weeping to me and say, Give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once, if I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, my Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together responsively the words from Psalm 19. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. A reading from James. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering, will save the sinner's soul from death, and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. There's reward in leadership, but leadership also involves heavy burdens, difficulties that arise. In the Bible, the prophet Jonah grew weary of leading the charge for God. Once he said, it is better for me to die than to live. Fleeing to the wilderness, the prophet Elijah had reached the same conclusion. He said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take my life away. In the first reading today, Moses is at a point of no return, a breaking point. God called him to leadership to liberate the Israelites from slavery in Egypt, to bring them to freedom in the Promised Land. On the way, however, there was complaining. The refugees grew tired of eating manna, the same food every day. They wanted fish, cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, even garlic. I would have left garlic off the list of demands. But in any case, Moses was worn out by all the whining, being a leader for God. He prayed to God, I am not able to carry these people alone. They are too heavy for me. <clears throat> if this is the way you are going to treat me, 
put me to death at once, and do not let me see my misery. God's reply, as we've heard it in the first reading, was to lift Moses' burden, appointing for him 70 elders to help him in the work, to serve in leadership. Verse 25 says, The Lord took some of the spirit that was on Moses and put it on the 70. Leadership thereby became a shared endeavor. Moses learned to delegate. During our Monday evening Bible study this week, we read from the third chapter of Mark's Gospel. Jesus' fame had become so widespread, great throngs of people were coming to see him, coming to be healed. They came from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, from beyond the Jordan River, and from the region of Tyre and Sidon. By this point, Mark's Gospel tells us Jesus could not go into any town openly. His fame, the demands on his time, were that great. But this is what happens in Mark's Gospel, near the end of chapter 3. Jesus goes up a mountain. He invites his followers to join him. And from them, he appointed 12 to be apostles of his ministry. He authorized them to undertake the same work he was doing. Like with God helping Moses, Jesus delegated leadership. He shared power. He gave his spirit to others. One of the twelve Jesus appointed that day was John. Before following Jesus, John had been a fisherman with his brother James and their father Zebedee. In the gospel today, John is no longer a humble fisherman, now an apostle, a member of Jesus' inner circle. He's a bit full of himself. He says to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone healing casting out demons in your name. And we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said to John, Do not stop him, for no one doing a deed of power in my name will be able to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. Jesus, we see, was inclusive, not restrictive, with leadership. In the first reading, Joshua tries to restrict Eldad and Medad from leadership, but he is reprimanded by Moses. Moses said, Joshua, are you jealous? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them all. In the second reading from James today, there's an insightful verse that reveals the preference for shared leadership in the early church. Verse 14 says, If any are sick, they should call for the elders of the church, and have them come and pray, anointing in the name of the Lord. Nothing in this verse diminishes a bishop, a pastor, or a council president. The verse instead reveals wisdom that leadership is worst when hoarded and best when shared. Moses was wiser than Joshua, Jesus wiser than John. They were open to sharing leadership. 
What remains for us is to join in the work too and to welcome others to do the same. In the church, there's a place for all. There's leadership to share, ministries needing the commitment of everyone. Each of us is endowed with gifts, with talents to share. Great or small, the Lord loves and welcomes them all. So, this is a practical message today. For in the coming week, church members will receive by email or by postal mail our congregation's 2021 annual report, our proposed 2022 budget, and the names of nominees who've agreed to join the church's council. Let's complete our shared duty this week, casting our votes, following the directions to fulfill our membership vows. We are one in Christ. We are united in shared ministry during this unusual time. There are rewards in church life, but also challenges managed best when shared together. Let us be in prayer for one another, for the troubled world, never losing our hope in Christ. Jesus says in the gospel, whoever gives even a cup of water to another because they bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. Let us offer our cups of water every day in the time given to us, gratefully serving in the joy and challenge of being disciples of Christ, members of his church, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join together as we confess our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. 
We pray for the church and its ministry. Bless the newly baptized and encourage them in their journey of faith. Sustain all members of the body of Christ in lives of prayer, service, and worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear Lord, our prayer. Lord. We pray for natural wonders of your creation. Restore damaged forests, waterways, and natural habitats, and lead us to be good stewards of what you have provided. Lord, in your mercy, hear Lord. our prayer. We pray for those in authority. Give them wise minds and compassionate hearts. Strengthen in them a desire to pre protect the vulnerable and care for those underserved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are struggling with cancer, dementia, or any other disease. Provide them with peace and resilience for the days ahead. Sustain caregivers with energy and patience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the worship leaders of this congregation, musicians, readers, acolytes, and ushers. Bless us through their ministry and grant them the passion to continue in their service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all your saints, those we have loved and known, and those from every time and place. Continue to guide us by their example and reassure us of your promised salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. seated. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Made into one family by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer Jesus has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All who hunger and thirst, come. The table, the table is, ready. is ready. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord.
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.